Welcome into the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, the number one rated sportsbook app out, app out there. Use code DNVR to get amazing odds boost as AJ jams out to Mbop. Uh, should we start there, AJ? Let's be real. This is one hockey game. The others are still missing Landy. They're still missing Taves. They're still missing Nachushkin. We're not... For 55 minutes, it still looked like they were m- missing McKinnon. True. So uh, They were... They were I would say for all 60 minutes, they were missing any Kale semblance. McCarr, <laughs> Kale McCarr, any any semblance of uh, cohesion. Yeah, no communication. Uh, there was there yeah. was nothing going on. Tonight. I tell you, uh, this the, the this is the perfect song for this game because Washington Washington just watched Colorado roll into town and they just said, "Bop," <laughs> and that was it. All right. I, uh, for, for real, though, yes, the game was awful. Yes, we'll get into it. We'll get into all of the disasters and the, the, the few good things on the team. Don't overblow this one. I'm not going to try and sell you on this being a catastrophe yeah. beyond the Look, singular game in this, a back. Yeah, exactly. Like, let's, let's, let's be real. Like, this was a fiasco of a game. Yeah. Like a true, genuine, embarrassing nightmare. Definitely. Of a contained single game. Yep. No more than that. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it not. Looks- this is not. This is not. It did, one of the one of the annoying things about covering a good team is that every win it's burned is, it down with every loss. Well, well, yeah. Every win is living up to expectations, and every loss is disaster, <laughs> emblematic of something bigger, yeah. of, of deeper problems. Right? Yeah. Of oh my god, championship teams can't act this way, or. You know, Scott Masters was on was on Twitter today saying the the Evs are not a team, and he was on he was on our show two weeks ago talking about how they were going to be so good, and it was just like let's you know like let's just ease back on Keep the it on the level a just bit here. a touch here, like th- this is absolutely like. This was absolutely a fiasco. Terrible game. Like they Terrible were, hockey game. They were so bad in this in this game. And there's no like there's no dressing that up. There's no kidding around it. There might be there might be some definite you know, there might be like reasons for it. It might also just be that they played like I, I think shit. it's some of this, some of that, probably. You like know? I, I feel like I feel like you could, if you if you really wanted to, you could find a good excuse. This is the first time they've traveled out east in 19 months. Yep. McKinnon's you know, first game back from the COVID. It, yeah, McKinnon and Jack Johnson both coming back from COVID. They haven't had a full team practice in a week now. Yep. Uh, they, you know, they. They're but, still they're still not rocking a full entire lineup. Yeah, missing key pieces still. Right. Like they're still they're you know they're they they have not had their they have not had their top line properly together at yet. all yeah. this season. Like there's there are clearly like there are excuses. Like there are there are things that you can point to and say like, hey, here's the. This is this is happening. Like the, the, and maybe this is why. Ultimately, like you just cannot be this what, bad. Whatever the, and particularly the Avs' best players were a hot garbage. Yeah, fire I mean, tonight. we're talking like McKinnon is McKinnon's first game of the season. He's gonna come out of it with an assist. Yep. And if you just looked at the score sheet. And you're like, okay, well, maybe it wasn't so bad, right? But I mean, it was a nothing assist with three minutes left in right, the game, that and was it was over. just d- atrocious. Yeah, like he that line got devoured, and then, I mean, we, let, look, I mean, we're already diving look, right in here, and this is the worst game that we've seen Kill McCarr the, play it, maybe in his entire Mc, career. McKinnon, Rantanen, and McCarr. Together, each of them ended the game minus five. <laughs> minus five. Yeah, and normally, normally we bin plus minus as it being particular as, as it, it being it's particularly not tell meaningful. You but I mean, it, about the advanced quality of the game. But your best players were on for five goals. Well, against. And, and it was well well earned yeah. tonight because they they were horrible defensively. Mm-hmm. They were horrible defensively. They got they were too cute on offense with the puck. 
They did not. They were not committed to the little details in their own zone. Yeah. They they acted like this was a preseason game. It and, just wasn't any good, man. And and this will extend to the rest of the lineup too, but the puck management tonight was frankly unacceptable. Oh, I mean, That's, it's you cannot build a team around uh, a defense, especially around moving pucks, and then have all of them fail to move pucks in any meaningful way. Except Bowen Byram. It, and it wasn't just failing moving pucks like the Avs are trying complicated breakouts and things like that. Duh. They're missing no pressure, wide open, 20-foot passes, and they're not even reachable by the well, guy and, receiving and the not pass. even to like, Not even to, like, contested players here right. who are trying to fend a guy off, it's, you know? It's wide open player to wide open player, yeah, and they right. can't hit a pass. It's trying to get on the wall and then trying to, trying to move a puck to a guy... In the middle of the ice, who's by himself. Yep. And then, oh, it there goes clanging off of a skate. Or, oh, it's two feet behind him. Yeah, it oh, was it, bad. It bounces off of it. They make the pass, and it bounces off the guy's stick. And just, okay, and they turn that possession over right at center ice. Yep. And it's back the and other it's way. And right it's right back in their with, own zone. With the first period alone, they gave up six, seven, eight odd man rushes. Like, it, yeah, was, it was out of control. It was all over the place, man. It was insane. It was just... This is this is as uncharacteristic of an like them losing to the way that they did St. Louis the other day was uh, you predictable. Kinda, yeah. It was predictable, and you kind of just shrug and you're kind of like, all right, well, you want better out of Darcy Kemper. Well, yep. tonight you definitely want better out of Darcy Kemper. No doubt about that. But you that. didn't give him any help tonight. Also true. Like you didn't give the guy any help. Yeah. I, so it yeah. was. This was. This was as I, I mean. This was a soft. Selfish, uninterested hockey team tonight. Yeah, it was. Uh, look, outside of a handful of guys, which we'll probably get to in the second period, this team had their brains turned off. They were not engaged. They honestly, they looked like they didn't give a shit for a significant portion of this hockey game. Yeah. And that is what it is. Again, it's just one game. It happened. You're gonna stick it in its own little bag and and burn the tape, dude. But you I can't don't even, do yeah. this again. I don't even. I don't even know what the coaching staff tries to address tomorrow yeah. in video. I don't. I don't know how you don't walk in and say you guys were fucking awful. Be better. Like, what else do you say but that? Straight up, like there doesn't need to be a screaming match. Really. It's just like, it just needs to be like, you guys know. Yep. I don't feel like the coaching staff has to say much to I them. I don't think about they this. do. The, and this was so bad. Yeah. You look up and down the lineup, and it was just that. It was just so bad. Yep. You're talking like JT Comfer got crushed in analytics tonight, and arguably and he was their best player. Was one of was one of the ones that stood out in a positive way. Yep. The uh, Logan O'Connor looks like a stud. Darren Helm finally looked pretty solid. Yep. You know, like the uh, Mikhail Maltsev was okay. He was passable. There were moments. But I liked Bowen Byram. I liked Bowen Byram as an in between games one and games two. Where game one he was incredible, and game two he got punched in the face pretty badly. Three is maybe a little more real reality for him. Yeah, and game him, three but. is a lot more of the the in between. But that that I expect more from him for the most of yeah, this season. You just can't. It's you cannot have JT Comfort can play. As good as he's capable of, Logan O'Connor yeah. can play as good Straight as he's up. capable of. I think the Avs even got a handful of good shifts out of Martin Kaut in the little bit of time that he played. Yeah, but it just doesn't matter because when your best players are that bad, yeah, you're gonna get your face kicked. I mean, in. You're, like, you got you're like your best players got rocked tonight. Yeah, like they got rocked tonight. So it's you know that's one of those. It, it, this is one this this is an easy game to talk about. Yep. Because their best players were were horrible. They were. In ev- and in that late every that aspect late push, of the game. Like who cares? It was way too little, way too late. It it's didn't five matter. to two with yeah. five minutes left, and then you guys decide to turn it up a notch. I say decide to turn it up a notch. Like that's not <laughs> how humanity of works. Of course not. But. You know, that's not that's just not how the world operates. But I mean, it, it definitely like the goal. It, the goal sums it up. McKinnon makes a great pass to Miko across the seam, and Miko rips a bomb to finish it. And look, 
obviously the other team Imagine trying to prevent that. that. But a quality pass that leads to a quality shot, if that existed at all in yeah. the first two periods Dude, of this hockey real. game. <laughs> for real, like, that's a, it, it, Ilya Samsonov did not play particularly well. And was not particularly tested. No, he, he walked wasn't. out of there with a win in which he gave up three goals and didn't play well. Yep. The, the, he faced fourteen shots at the first two periods like, combined. Yeah, like, like it just was not. It, it, it was just not. It was not a good night. Like, yeah, I mean, Bender's Bender's going to be on this one. This is an easy game to diagnose. I, I mean, look, you don't. If you want to take Bender's cheating and gambling for offense, look at Kale McCarr. He got himself in pinch, a ridiculous pinch, amounts pinch. of trouble, pinching repeatedly. And AJ, I'm not sure how you feel about this, but this was this felt like a a death sentence for Turnburn. This game to me. Yeah. So I mean, we've kind of been feeling it. Like we we way back in the day, we yeah. thought Sam Gerrard and Kale McCarr was like these these two fools are about to take over the league together. Yep. And then we saw them together last year, and it was like, ah, this isn't great. This is oh, this is okay. <laughs> uh, and I, I would see, I would, I would like to switch it up. It clearly didn't work. If tonight. there's a change that I'm gonna make, and, and you know, obviously Landis got coming back into the lineup. But how much better does your lineup right. immediately look when On you go both ends of the puck? Your yeah. your top line, and Everyone then moves and then, down and a and spot. then Burkowski yeah. goes with Kadri. And then you kind of figure it out from there, right? Like, yep. everybody just looks way, way, way more comfortable. But Byron McCarr and Gerard and EJ. And Much Gerard and EJ have been very already good been together. comfortable, yeah. Yeah, they're very good together. And then Byron and McCarr, like, do that. Yep. Yep. It, it, it's made sense, Gerard and McCarr being, being comfortable together. And I don't. The veteran guys that understand how each other plays while, while EJ kind of shuttles in the rookie with Byron. I get like I, on paper it makes sense, but it, it, come on, man! Like I mean, you want to, this isn't working. The problem, the problem that I think stood out tonight is neither of them looked comfortable with each other. Yeah, it's it's a place where Makar and Gerard have both been put in a spot where they're the guy who's supposed to be pushing pucks. They're the guy who's supposed to be aggressive and actively moving things forward on their pairing, paired with Makar for a long time last year was with Taves. Gerard did bounce around quite a little bit, but. There isn't that stalwart on that pairing right now. Yeah. And it doesn't feel like they've figured out where each one needs to be a little bit more conservative. Yeah. Uh, you saw it, what, the the fifth goal? The one that Gerard just whipped through the middle of the ice? And a play that you just can't make? Yeah. Which... Well, and, like, and then Burkowski, Burkowski hands it off. Right. I'm, well, so there was the other... There was... The Murray failed clear. The Burakovsky tries to clear it, but sends it literally right to a guy's stick. Yeah. And then Curtis McDermott is, oh, I'm in no man's land yeah. now. Yeah, and Anthony Mantha's alone yeah, in front of the right. net. Right. And it's like... That's a tough one for Kemper because Mantha blocks that shot. I, and then and then he gets the... He has his own rebound, and, like, that's a tough one for Kemper. Uh, that one I'm not putting on Kemper because... No, for sure. For sure every for sure, single sure. skater on the ice made the wrong decision and oh, play dude, at every possible so, opportunity. It was so bad, uh, man. It was so bad. I do want to get to Kemper uh, in a little bit as well, but we do have a super chat here that we need to get to. Uh, thank you, Billy, for the super chat. When the teams throw someone on the half boards to pick off those low to high passes to the D, the Avs have no idea how to generate offense. I don't. I don't think Washington particularly did anything that was incredibly effective against the Avs tonight. The Avs just couldn't yeah. make a pass. Straight up, the Avs were their own worst enemy yeah. in this one. Um, I mean, them. Them obviously, they like to play low to high uh it's a way sure. that they're it's it's how they are very comfortable playing but i i d legitimately like the idea that the abs don't know how to play offense unless they do that i not a, I, you, this is this has been a top five scoring it, team for like three years you saw it in the last five minutes of the game where their offense started clicking and they started making effective yeah. passes it's just it and wasn't there for the first fifty five minutes. Of this like game. they're like that. That's like they're that dangerous. Like the the first seven or eight minutes of the second period before you know right right about the time they tied it up. Yep. 
Like they Before came out and they entirely, actually yeah. they actually played well. They were they they were making they were making better decisions. Their execution was better. Like what is problematic about the Avs is that you can dominate them. Like Washington was and then before you know it, it's 2-2 in the second period. And you're like, we've totally outplayed these guys. What's going on here? Yeah. That, so, well, and then the wheels came off the abs. Yeah. And, and then obviously they just went, they fell apart and then went right back to getting housed. But they are like that. They're, they're when they, when they play well, they're very hard to beat for a reason. Yeah, of course. And this isn't, of course, this isn't all Colorado playing poorly. Washington played lights out. Yeah, they're they're a good team. Like, let's not take anything away from but them. But Washington got handed a lot tonight and just took advantage, yep. which is a thing that good teams do. Right. If you're just going to give pucks away. Teams are going to score on yeah. you if they're good. Yeah, a good team like that, a guy that's as talented as Evgeny Kuznetsov is going to make you pay. Yep. That's, Hello. McFly, <laughs> like for real. This was this was this was not complicated tonight. Yeah, we'll get to that in a bit too, Billy. But we'll get this, to that in a this minute. This was not complicated. It was dude, they were just their own worst enemy. Yep. And then Washington burned them. Yep. Washington is too good of a team to play that poorly. It against. wasn't a complicated. They process, could have gotten yeah. away with t- that stuff last year against San Jose and LA and Anaheim. I mean, they they're not gonna. It's not gonna fly this well, year. And you said it too, right? If the Avs played their C game, even this maybe this game is competitive, like it was in the at the first half of the second period. Yeah, maybe. But they played their F game. Oh yeah, yeah. This is we might we might look back at the end of the year and be like, that's one of the worst games that they've played. I don't think the same any way. Doubt yeah. the same way. Do you remember last year? If you look back to last year, one of the worst games that they played all season. Opening night against game St. One, Louis. Game one. And we they looked, immediately turned it around and dumped on them. But. We looked back. Well, and then they didn't. Yep. Remember? Because they destroyed game two. But they were three and three at yep. the start they, of last year. It was a bit paced. We'll put it that way. Although last year was a lot more like they were having trouble scoring goals. Yeah. It, different and they problems. really haven't. You know, they. they what was the final against Chicago? And it five ended up being 5-3. Three, three. Yeah. They ended up being 5-3, and they've scored three goals in the last two games. Yeah. And, like, there's a three-goal lead. It's They've found a way to find production, but certainly in tonight's game, the way the, the sandwich got made was disgusting. Oh, dude, it's just a, just a mess. One more super chat here real quick. Kemper saw some shots tonight. Wish he could have played like he was in Arizona against us. Yep, we'll get yeah. to that. But I mean, we are brought to you by Breckenridge Brewery, the official beer of DNVR. I'm certain that game made a lot of you want to drink. So <laughs> go get yourself a Breck brew. Go to your local liquor store. Find it online with the Breck beer locator. And come on down to the DNVR bar. Get yourself a bunch of Breck brews on tap. Come have a good time with us. As For as bad as the game was, it's always nice to hang out with the people at the bar, AJ. Oh, yeah. It's always good. I spent most of the game chilling with uh, our peeps. Yeah. Vibing out. Having a yeah, good time. Going to watch some F1 on Sunday. Excited for that down at the DNVR bar. I'm very excited for that because no Broncos game to worry about. That's Thursday where we are yep. competing. It'll be done and over. Yeah. So... We'll sequester our little corner for that. I'm excited. Also, check out the Ball Corporation, who are hiring for their golden plant. You can text GOLDEN to 77222 or go to jobs.ball.com to get your what, application today. What channel is F1 even on on TV? ESPN. No, no, it's NBCSN. Is it? No, 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 no. It is ESPN now. Okay. I think I, I, I'm... It's, wait, on, it's on F1TV.com? Well, yeah. <laughs> I... You're gonna you're gonna have to live without your uh, your donut man individual can. Uh, at yeah, the bar. I mean I'll have my phone. Okay, so you'll be all right. Yeah, I'll have my phone so I can tune in when I want. Uh, yeah, it, it'll. I believe it's, it'll probably be ESPN two. Um, probably. But yeah. Anyway, go get yourself some money so you can pay for the F one package with uh with the Ball Corporation. They're an amazing company. They pay uh, good living wages. They give benefits. They'll help you fill out your resume with classes and stuff if you have holes in it. So it's super awesome. Uh, they're a dope company. We love them over here. They they support everyone super well. They're also you know actually trying to take care of planet Earth, which is probably good. Good thing to do. Seems like 
a good thing. Yeah, generally. You know, I'd like the planet to still exist when I'm old. But uh, anyway, the second period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. <laughs> yeah. Rudo and AJ chatting at you. So let's talk Darcy Kemper. Yes, there's a standing caveat here of the Avs completely abandoned that human being in their net tonight. I thought I had abandonment issues, but <laughs> that dude is looking at the Avs, the, the Avs in the locker room like, what the I hell? thought I left Arizona, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, and on the whole, look, I'm not going to fault Kemper for tonight's game, but my one concern with Kemper, pretty specific, but we've seen a number of shots go in coming up the right wing side of the ice, they go blocker side, and it beats him clean. Granted, a number of those have been the highest of danger because the Avs just decide covering someone walking into the circles isn't worth their time. But still, there's a bit of a pattern there over the last couple games. Yeah, look, it's definitely fair to, to, to say, hey, this has not gotten off to a great start. Yeah. Um... You know, if you're the kind of person that looks at what's immediately in front of you and projects it into a long-term problem, then you're concerned. Yep. If you're the kind of person that looks at an immediate problem and says this is something that can totally be fixable, we'll see. Then maybe you're less concerned. But right now, I don't know how. I don't know how you could like feel good about what's happened so far. Yeah. Because he just hasn't been good enough, and in this game. In particular, because I don't want to continue to hold the St. Louis game against him tonight. Sure. Separate but, entities. Yeah, but but in this game, it, he didn't get any help at all. Agreed. I mean, we're talking extended sequences defensively where he's just... Where not only the abs are failing to clear pucks, but they're failing to cover people entirely. Right. And I mean, like, rebounds, it, rebounds coming off of them. And they're not, and the, there's not an ab within yeah, ten feet of him. He's yeah. got to deal with that. Yeah. No, they're just back and forth. I mean, the, the, they make it two on one on a three on one, where Kale McCarr just totally abdicates all responsibility. Yep. It's bad. It's bad. Like Kale, Mc, who like, who likes annoying and bad pinches more, Kale McCarr or grandmothers? Tough sell on that one. I might have to stick with grandmothers, but tonight, Kale McCarr put up a good fight. Exactly. I mean, Kale McCarr made like a, he looked like a, like a grandmother. <laughs> it was it was slow and bad and just is this was and this is the thing like this everybody's gonna make this excuse for him because of that I screenshot. Don't, I don't care what's wrong with his hand. The that hand, doesn't affect his exactly. brain. Exactly. Yeah. The hand, the hand is not an excuse for the decision making that was that poor. Yep. That kind of decision making, he's better than that. He knows that. And honestly, you don't see great players string together bad games. Correct. And so it makes you it makes you think that Thursday you're gonna we're finally gonna see the Kale McCarr yeah. that we really need. Is there gonna really be need. an explosion Thursday? Right. Yeah. The, the one that we really have been like, okay, well, come on. Where but, that? but like it, he, he clearly there's something wrong with his hand. Obviously, but that you can still make smart decisions. With yeah, a bad you hand. could still you could still be a productive NHL player. You just he may just not be full level, full capacity. But I mean, come on, his problem tonight was not physical, not at all. The, though, and, I, unless unless your argument is that his brain was physically and, detached well, from the rest of and, his body, and it's not just it's, it was just bad hockey. It's not just that. It's even the physical gift side of the game. Sure, maybe his hand was bad. That doesn't explain how the dude got completely walked on the first goal of the game. Yeah. Like, that's not a problem with your hand. Makar is way too good of a skater for stuff like that to be happening to him. Absolutely. No. You, I, a, hand injury, a hand injury cannot cannot be the reason that all of this other shit is going on. Yep. That's absurd. Yep. This is an absurd leap to make. Yep. It's not to say that it doesn't have any effect on the rest of his game, but if if a hand injury that he is willing to play through is is going to cause him to completely shut down in all other facets, Kale McCarr is not the player that we have thought. Yeah, agreed. 
And that's obviously I'm not going to draw that kind of a conclusion. Right. So we're, that's not what we're saying. We're just saying exactly. he had a shitty game tonight. Yeah, but. he played he played like garbage tonight. So it's it is what it is, and and the problem is there was no help. Makar had a terrible night. McKinnon was bad. Miko Rantanen was a ghost until the last five minutes of the yeah. game. Uh, Where on, was the beast Miko from yeah. the from the third period of that St. Louis game where right. he was like single handedly trying to take over that game? It wasn't there. He was just a monster that night, and then this one is just, okay. So. It's it's not just Makar by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, and Sam uh, Gerrard was not good next to him. The either. other like, the other tough part of this is that a tough schedule to open. Yep, a Washington, Florida, Tampa road trip right it, out of the gate it doesn't is get easier on the hard. rest of that's, this trip. Yeah, that's hard. That's especially hard when your lineup has you have not played a full lineup. Uh, you have not you you you're either not playing a full lineup or you're not playing the guys that you would prefer to play. In a full lineup. Yep. Uh, and it's just a, it, you know, it's just a mess. Yeah, it's this is a, this it, this is a, a tough one coming out of the game. So th- th- there's a very real possibility that this is the hardest stretch of the season for the Avs. I mean, yeah, it could be. Just given all the roster issues that they've had, as well as the quality of opponents yep. all in a row. Yep. It could definitely be one of the tougher stretches that they end up. So, we'll we'll have to see on that. Let's get at least a couple positive notes in here. Our king of the game. Can we kick? Can we? Can you ban the guy that comes in here and says hockey isn't a real sport? Yeah, yeah that's like that, shut the fuck up. Go do something else with your life. Th- it's clear you don't need to be here. We'll put it that way. It's yeah. So dumb, dude. All right. Anyway, I, I don't know what this is. Can we bring up the king of the game? We're asking him to do four things at once. So that's. Let's, that's my entire life now during hockey games. So True. welcome to the club. Uh, JT Comfort, we're giving it to him again. The man has the man's back. The start of his season is exactly what has been asked of he JT does, Comfort. Yeah, we wanted to know is he gonna be any good? Is he is what's going on here? And look, he <coughs> great individual effort on the PK. Yep. Get keeps the ads in the game in the first yeah. period. He gives them a little bit of, a, a little bit of life, you and, know? And I beyond the goal and the assist. I thought he was one of the few players on the team that gave a consistent effort tonight. Yeah, and it sucks because uh, JT's not going to be a guy that's going to single-handedly stem the tide. Of course not. <laughs> uh, he's never been a play driver. Yeah. Uh, so when they're getting crushed like they were tonight, his fancy stats are awful. They are. But you you watch that game, and you can see that he was a guy that was engaged in what was going on. Yep. And that's encouraging because, I mean... They need that man. He is an he is an important guy for them. Yep. They needed the coming into this year. We you know they needed a Tyson Jost or a JT Comfer or one of the rookies. You know a, a new hooker or a Rant or whatever to to step up and to really and to really try and fill some of the loss that they that they're going to feel with no Jonas Donskoy. Right. There, Especially no Jonas Donskoy. There is a lack of high end depth. Yeah, which is a weird phrase to put together. But sure, guys that guys on a third line that might be a second line on a bad team, right. like Jonas Donskoy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's true, and and the Avs need some of that. I think they got a decent amount of it, not just from Con for tonight. AJ's vibe into this rap we got going in here. Yeah, I don't know what this is, but I'm <laughs> I'm feeling it in my heart. By Little Dirk, so. Is it little or low? It's Lil. Okay. Yeah. No dark. Uh, you gotta say it with an accent uh, in the south. Uh, <laughs> let's let's start here. What did you think about Joe's game tonight? Up and down. Not good enough. Because I do think there were some good signs in the offensive zone. You yeah, saw him. Look, there were there was there's always some things in Joe's game that are good, but overall, I felt like tonight just wasn't good and, enough. Well, you also saw the complete disaster on that fourth goal. Yeah. Where Jared Bednar says, you know what? I'm going to throw Jost out with the top line, guys. He's trying to find an answer because Berkey wasn't well, it, dead. No, Berkey was awful. Well, again, the Avs' entire top six and their top pairing were untenable the yeah. entire night. Unacceptable. Ag- agreed. But beyond that, you throw Jost out there. 
they immediately have a defensive zone shift where there's a switch play that the communication doesn't get made. Someone doesn't know where they're supposed to be. And it's Evgeny Kuznetsov walks from the top of the circle to inside the faceoff dot, completely uncontested, and then rips one past Kemper. And it's you look at a play like that and you go, that just can't happen. What do you do? Yeah. What can you, how do you fix that? You just say, be better? Is that really it? Yes. Okay. I mean, there's better on that play. And you look at all five guys on the ice and you say, well, if all five of you make better decisions and play better. this We're, we're never in this room in the first place. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. And then, it's, it's the story with so many goals tonight where it's not one brutal mistake that causes the problem. It's a chain reaction of every single opportunity someone makes the wrong play or the yeah. wrong decision or yep. whatever. There was nobody to stem the tide. Yeah. And if if the answer is if, if Logan O'Connor is your finger yeah. in the dam. Yeah, you're in trouble. <laughs> you're about to drown, homie. <laughs> That's a it's a ten foot wide hole and O'Connor doesn't quite fill yeah, it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And and you know what? Credit to the, to that fourth line as well. O'Connor made a fantastic play. We call him play. the fourth line. Did they played third line minutes because. But it's really the third line at this point. Yeah. And you know what? They were they were effective, man. Yeah. They looked good. They they were one of the lines that we had biggest question marks going into the season because it was LOC full time guy is Darren Helm washed. What's going on in between them? And so far, what's going on in between them hasn't mattered. They've moved a couple of different guys there, and that line just keeps rolling. LOC looks great. Legitimately great. Yep. Great. And Darren Helm looks totally solid and fine and passable. Yeah. Although he did definitely blow that coverage in the St. Louis he game did. on that one goal. He did very badly. But, but he but gets a goal tonight off of a great pass from LOC. And he finished that thing. Yep. Which and is where which is now, where we're going to we're going to see the frustrations <laughs> with that line. For sure, I, we've already seen it. I, every other shift they have, I'm I'm sitting here like, yep, that line ran out of talent again. Yeah. <laughs> but but Helm finished that one, definitely. And and that's look, if you're living in a world where, in a healthy universe, that's your fourth line. If they're giving oh, yeah. you consistent puck possession and a goal every third game, definitely, you're feeling pretty cool with it. Oh, if every third game, yeah. you're you're feeling. Golden Pony Boy. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. No, that's... So So the depth kind of did their job tonight, for the most part. And... Uh, let me put it this way. The forward depth did their job tonight. Because the defensive depth didn't. At all, outside of Byram. <laughs> AJ's just grooving Tom Petty over here. I can't. This is uh, Rascal Flatts. Is it Rascal? Oh, it's the re. It's the yeah. the remake. Okay. I, I, whatever. It all sounds I, This the same is just to one me. of those songs where you're just like, you know what? It's gonna be okay. Okay. Fitting fitting on a night where Avs the Avs universe just does not doesn't feel good for yeah. sure. Um, guys, uh, can you guys be nice to each other in the chat? <laughs> I understand that there might be disagreeing viewpoints. That's okay. Caleb is always wrong, but he's always welcome to hang out as long as he's polite. He actually likes hockey, unlike that dude earlier. Yeah, exactly. That guy's not allowed because <laughs> you don't get to come into a hockey chat and be like, hockey's not even a real sport. <laughs> All right. Well, AJ, so you're a believer in the bounce back game for the Avs here? Oh, uh... I don't know about that, but I do. I do wonder. Game two of McKinnon. It, bad player, or great players don't string together bad games. So Kale McCarr, the top line will finally be back together. Um, True, Landy's back. Devon Taves is on the trip, and so, we'll so see. Yeah. that's kind of a. I mean, we know his skating's up to speed because he's been skating since preseason, right? But so. You know, like it's I don't know about the bounce back, but I feel I feel comfortable saying we're going to see a better effort. And that's not a thing that we criticize on our show very much because it's really unfair to cast that stone at people about effort most of the time. Definitely. But I think tonight to a man, even those guys would be like, hey, not good enough. Yeah, we've got better to give. 
And they're so, going to be nights where you play hard and just play poorly. Totally, and tonight, totally. I think I think they were checked out. They played poorly and they gave up on themselves. All right. Don't ever give up on yourselves, kids. And adults. When it's never too late to turn When it you're around. trying to check into a hotel room with a certain someone, you don't want it to play poorly. All right? What do you mean a certain someone? I, is I, this is this like an illicit thing or is this like a It could be your wife. Is this is this scandal? Okay, so it's it not necessarily scandalous. It could be your it could be a hooker. I don't care. Uh, I'm just saying. I, I mean, don't judge here. My gosh, man. All I'm saying is look good, feel good, play good in the bedroom, all right? So go get yourself Manscaped. Use code DNVR to get 20% off when you get the perfect package 4.0. Free shipping as well. Yeah, they got all the zooks. tools. <laughs> what? They got all the tools you need, whether it be trimming your privates or your face, everything in between. You can take care of it all with Manscaped. They got deodorant. They got breath mints. Whatever you need to look good, feel good, play good. In the bedroom, at the bar, sex worker, is that the official term? My bad. My fault. My fault. Uh, yeah, Manscaped. Go get it. They're awesome. They have great products. They really do work amazingly well. I use the trimmer on my beard all the time. It's it's super nice. Beyond beyond the meme that I make of this show, the products are actually good. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes lost in talking about our balls in creative ways. <laughs> the Manscaped products are actually dope. Yeah. So they uh, actually do a great job. There are a whole bunch of dudes, <laughs> and I know this to be true, who watch our show, have used the promo code, and been very happy with their Manscaped products. Straight up. So if you are not one of those dudes, <laughs> get become one. Quit telling on Look, yourself it works. and join the club. It works for ladies too. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna single this yeah, out. I, I know the company's called Manscaped, but I, I I use I I I use dudes without any sort of gender. That's I, fair. It's, dudes it is, is just a pretty a, gender neutral term. It I I use it that way, and then there are people who get mad at me where they're like, See, "I'm not is, a dude," and I'm like, ah, "This is why my I, bad." I've leaned into the Texas roots, AJ, because y'all never doesn't work. Oh, I'm dude. Y'all is wonderful. I'm saying <laughs> y'all is all encompassing. <laughs> it works well. See, uh, one of those dudes. Even that cat can get manscaped. I'm get telling it. you, one of those dudes. There, there's they're a out whole, there. there's a whole grip of y'all out there, and I know that to be true. That's, all right, sex worker is way close to a plumber. It's not the opposite by any means, all right? Jeremy, you ever laid some pipe? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> not not opposite. Very similar. In any case, also check out Hassle Cattle Company. Uh, we both got down on that burger tonight. Yeah, the burger. We both ended up with getting it absolutely delicious. You can never go uh, wrong with man, it. Man, it's so good. Uh you can also get it at home if you go to HassleCattleCompany.com. Use code DNVR10 uh, to get 10% off your order. If you have an order of over $200, you get free shipping as well. You can get all sorts of steaks, all sorts of the whatever meat you want. Chuck roasts if you're uh, trying Last to... I saw, they had a prime rib deal going on. They, so that, it was I'm like not buy sh- two, get one free or something yeah, like I'm that. Yeah, I'm not 100% yeah. sure if that's still going on, but they... They have I, regular deals. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. I regularly get emails from Hassel about sweet deals that they're having. Yeah, so so keep your eyes peeled for them. Go you get don't need the bunch. butcher box when you've got Hassel Cattle exactly. Company. Exactly. It's like a butcher box, but... so Customized. L- legit. No, the the thing that I really like about it is we had like butcher box for... Oh, it was a local one for a while. Yeah. And we couldn't get through the meat fast enough. So the next month's one would show up and we have a freezer full of meat. With hassle, you just order it when you're when you need more. Like, <laughs> just had a freezer full of meat, officer. Yep, it just happens. Yep. Well, my butcher boxes stack up on me. Okay, those aren't human remains. I swear. Nighthawk knows. the The wagyu is ridiculously it's nice. So yeah, it's so good. So good. If you haven't tried it, you got to come try it. Nighthawk is somebody that you ignore when she talks about which sports teams to root for, but you pay attention to when it comes to anything eating. True. She's got the she's got the cooking game down. Dude. The whole Instagram is just like <laughs> absurd. It, I, I can't look at it anymore because Dude, it's like I just get too hungry. It pisses <laughs> like, me off cuz I will I'll flip through it at like 2 o'clock in the morning and I'll be like, "Well, now I'm hungry." Thanks a lot. All right, so 
Also check out DraftKings Sportsbook. Dude. Uh, I'm not going to tell you to bet on the abs because who knows what you're going to see given the, the betting roster. On, betting on hockey kind of low-key sucks. It's tough to do, but betting on the Islanders looks like it would have been a great idea. Okay, well, betting on the Islanders is always awesome. Okay, um, calm down. Because at least one of my teams finally is showing <laughs> something. They, I mean, they got caved in the first 30 minutes of this game. And, and it was 0-0, zero, zero, all right? True. So why don't you just gear it down there, big shifter? True. They're up 4 nothing. They're doing work. Mm, all right. Well, you know what? If you believe in it as much as AJ does, head on over to DraftKings Sportsbook. Use code DNVR with a new account to get amazing odds boost every single day. You can't go wrong. It, I mean, literally every day they have some fun bet that's like boosted to plus 250 and it's like just take it put a dollar on it and see what happens to have fun with it that's uh i know we're doing f1 this weekend but we got to have another weekend of just rolling down to the bar and and betting our asses off that was such a great day it was genuinely one of the better days i've had in the last several months was rudo and i just watching seven different college football (laughs) games at once going all right we got to throw a bet on this game and then we got to throw a bet on that game and then just doing it having a blast with it it was great i turned 20 bucks into like 70 or something right yeah Yeah. by the end of that by the end of that day i'm up about 250 now live the dream yeah i i was up a thousand i've lost some but i took out 450 so i imagine i imagine that uh some of the late night betting on uh you can only sustain that for so long japanese (laughs) soccer (laughs) is probably gonna take its toll (laughs) but you know, I'm up 450 bucks that I have actively took out of the account, so it's all house money at this point. I'm having fun with it. You can't go wrong. Again, use the DNV car, DNVR code to get amazing odds boosts. With DraftKings Sportsbook, must be 21 or older, Colorado only. Other terms, restrictions, and conditions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. If you have a gambling problem, of course, call 1-800-522-4700. Also, Thursday night football. Uh, I've heard a, a little birdie told me that they are going absolutely in on the tailgate for Thursday night football. Yeah. Not just all you can drink alcohol, all you can eat sexy pizza, but DNVR merch 50 to 75% off. They're giving away a Broncos jersey at the tailgate. So if you're going to go to a tailgate, this is the one to go to. Come on down, come have a great time with us. Come win yourself some awesome stuff. It's an absolute blast. Uh, you don't even have to go to the game, just to let you know. Like, a, a couple people did this last week. They go to the tailgate, and they drink at the tailgate, and then they come to the bar and watch, watch the, the game, game at the bar. So it's a win-win all the way around. You can't go wrong with the, with the tailgate or, or the bar. For, for all of our, our sports coverage, basically. It's it's dope. So actually, it's not a tailgate. It's a watch party uh, because they play at the Browns on Thursday. Oh, apparently I'm wrong, and it's a watch party? But we are having all those cool stuff anyway. All of that is still happening here yeah, on Thursday. Just, Merch is still 50 to 75% off. It's still a jersey giveaway. It's just, not, it's just at the bar. So it makes yeah. your life that much easier. Just come to the bar. Also, the Evs play that night, so some of us will be here for hockey. The six of us that are here for hockey, hanging out, hopefully watching a better hockey game than tonight. Also, you know, not having to scramble to get the game on the TVs because ESPN Plus. Yeah, so the whole ESPN Plus thing was... uh, An adventure. Yeah. We got it to work in the end. Yeah, it was uh, when it all started working. It was great. All right. Third period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. AJ, what are the rules of hockey? Um, Well, I think you had a pretty good point (laughs) in the third period when you looked at me and said, you know it's a weird game when <laughs> yeah. the clearest cut call of the night was a goaltender interference call. And that the goaltender interference was blatant, but every other call in this hockey game, you had the classic, it's tripping, but it's also embellishment. Yeah, so for the record, he's either embellishing <laughs> or he tripped him. It can't be both. 
Or the guy tripped him. Yep. Which they called it a hook, I think. They didn't even call it tripping. But you have that. Was it was it slashing? I don't know. Well, there was the there was the slashing at the end, the, the empty net goal that I guess was fairly obvious too. Where no, takes no, 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 not wax. that one. They called slashing earlier in the game too. Yeah, I, when it was on a guy's legs. You're right. You're right. Yeah. But anyway, point is, point is, is that uh, the embellishment. Um, it's weird to me. It's it's weird to me that it's that, that officials will call that. Yeah. Uh, where they're like, oh, you're totally diving, and like they magically know, and then and then there are guys that just go down. Like, do you remember yeah. Ryan Hartman in that preseason yeah, game? Yeah, yeah. And that's what caused Landy to freak out. Yep. And it was like you don't. So you're not. You're not calling it there. Yeah, yeah, you don't think that 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 guy went down a little too easily. Like, where's the line but, here? And, you know. And the nonsense continues because the Avs get a power play because Sampo ran a elbows Tom Wilson in the face and Tom Wilson decides to cross check him back. Yeah, and like a light cross yeah, check. It like was, it was nothing. It was more like a nice casual reminder of, hey, I'm Tom Wilson. <laughs> I've never heard of you, but I'll beat the shit out of you <laughs> if you dare get near me again. And and, and then somehow that was a penalty. It, that was a penalty. And 30 seconds later, the entire 10 skaters on the ice decide to have a cross checking party in the <laughs> corner. Dude, it was like it was like a cross checking Gatling gun. <laughs> <laughs> and Maltsev gets drilled by one in the numbers, Dude. doesn't get called. That's Cal the worst BS. That was yeah. the worst cross check of the whole bunch. Yeah. Was the one that started this party. Couts in there laying the wood. There's multiple Washington players actively like showing the Both world hands. their stick. Both hands. <laughs> and then Kadri puts one in right at the end. And they're like, that one. Yeah. Kadri <laughs> on the outside of this whole like cross check bukkake <laughs> is like standing there. And then at the very end just goes. And they were like, no, 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 that, that's the one. Yeah. And it was like, bro. What is this? All righty, this is absurd. And then when they were on the power play yeah. later, and Kendrick Kendrick gets, gets mugged. straight up street level assaulted <laughs> behind the net. It was bad. And it was like, dude, what in the world is going on? I don't know. I, d I don't know the rules of hockey anymore. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what a kicked puck looks like. I don't know what a cross check is. I know I don't know what goalie interference is. So that's right. I expect to see this podcast in our brand new sentence shortly. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, anyway, it was yeah. it was an it was like, weird. The game wasn't competitive anymore, yeah, so the game it was, was over anyway. But it was very just like, what is happening? Okay, <laughs> yeah. the uh, the I did really like the Garnet Hathaway slash on McKinnon. <laughs> the double, he, it was the double. He, he does it and then whips the stick around and does it again yeah. to knock it out of his hands. Gets called for it <laughs> and is upset and goes, about it. Yeah. What did I do? <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, dude, you did it twice. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, you know. So it was. Uh, it was. You know. It is what it is. Yeah, exactly. It was whatever. It happened. I was glad. I was glad that they called the McKinnon one and that the. The uh, empty net goal ended up going to Ovi and yeah. not Kuznetsov. Get Ovi as many goals as yeah, he can. Yeah, straight up. Ovi, is, uh, Ovi has earned f empty net goals in every Caps win <laughs> this year. I'm saying. Every Caps Just win, he should get an Ovi. Get it, yeah, All exactly. Right. They, were like, they were like feeding Kuznetsov for the hat trick on that late game power play, and it was like, stop it right now and get it to, to give it to Ovi. All right. This man is a gem, and he needs to beat Gretzky's record. That's right. Everybody loves Ovi. <laughs> uh, so, look, this was not a particularly competitive hockey game from the Avs. Yeah. and I mean, that's the rub, right? Yeah. Right. It, whatever. The stuff that happened 
it's not like this was a one goal game in the third period and people yeah. are getting screwed over. Yeah, it but. was a two goal game and they got scored on 39 seconds in because yeah. they didn't come out with any jump or give a shit whatsoever. Yep. Uh, I will say I am more leery of performances like this because you are six years into a head coach's tenure. And I will say this game, the third game of the season, not something I'm concerned about yet. But if uh, if you start to see some more of these lethargic and weak effort yeah. performances, here's uh, I think that I think that you have to start worrying about your coaching staff. There is a game like this can happen once. Well, and they happen a handful of times throughout the year. Yes, but it's when you string a couple of these well, together that and it's it, like... It cannot be a common problem. Right. And this has not been a common problem in Bedner's tenure, but it cannot it cannot be a common problem. And I will say, I'm, again, I'm not going to worry about it right now. This is not going to be on my... Um, but uh, I will... S- Six years with a head coach, you start to wonder about the messaging and staleness and how tired are need, guys of it. Yeah, you know, a, a guys getting way too comfortable in the routine. But this is this is the kind of performance that puts up a red flag. Right. This is the kind of performance that you know when you're playing Metal Gear Solid and and Snake gets discovered and the thing pops up over his head and it makes a little bring bring noise. That's what that's what tonight's game is for me. It's a little bit of an alarm. Yep. But, but not, you you well, you keep an eye well, on and it. And this is and this is the type of thing. You have a game like this and the expectation from everyone inside the organization and out is that the team will respond. And because they know as just as everyone else knows that this isn't good enough. Yeah. So, if you get the response, the Avs go another 10, 15, 20 games looking like definitely a good team. They're not going to win them all. Yeah, but, you're not going to you don't spend time worrying about this then. Yeah. But it's you know, there to lose a game is one thing, but to but to just fail to show, uh, if you start to string those together, then you have a messaging problem. Yeah. You know that you have a a, a big big problem if yeah. that's a consistent issue. So I think that uh, I think I think just something I, I would say. I don't. I'm, I'm not gonna freak out about this, and then this is not something I'm saying. But that it's, this it's stored I'm not away saying, in the vault in the back of your. I'm head. not saying yeah. that tonight is Jared Bednar's fault, but it certainly, certainly not. If like we're you. To be honest with you, you can only blame a coach so much, given that they play exactly zero seconds of a game. There is this no, is not football, where an entire game plan. That goes week to week is built around coaching decisions and coaching execution and having a, your coaching staff plays a massive role in every single there's game. No, that is not the case in hockey. There's no magic pill when Kale McCarr makes an awful pinch. Right. You go to him and you say, hey, don't do that again. Right. <laughs> there's only so much that you could do there. Yeah, definitely. So it's a, it, I will say, uh, I, I will say just something to keep an eye on. For sure. If they start to string these together, then you really start to worry about it. Yeah, this. If you Great, yeah, Philip Grubauer is getting go watch in, one Seattle game. He's getting and you won't feel good about in Grubauer Seattle. At so all. yeah, all of this the Av like oh yeah, group group Philip Grubauer is. If you are of the opinion that the the Av should have kept Philip Grubauer, then you should have no complaints about Darcy Kemper because goalies in new situations struggle. Yep, this is a thing that we talked about. When they acquired him, it is a thing that we will continue to talk about until Darcy Kemper gets his head on straight and starts to play really, really well. Yep. And, of course, I don't believe in this, but I totally jinxed him by writing about him on opening night. Facts. Shouldn't have done it. I knew I shouldn't have done it. I knew I shouldn't the have done it. The tower strikes again. So. <laughs> Look. I'll, I'll, I'll start worrying more about Darcy Kemper when he gives up five in a game where the Avs defense exists. Yeah. So. Yeah. We'll start there. Definitely. But uh, anyway. <laughs> Good luck getting anybody out Look, of Anaheim right, right now, bro. So I'm I'm a lefty, so it doesn't make sense for me to do arm wrestling competitions anyway. Oh, that's true, because I'm not. Most people aren't, so I'm SOL when it comes to arm wrestling. Doesn't really add up. I mean, it's all about the wrist anyway, right? Which one's my mouse hand? Right. <laughs> well, uh, unless you're a crazy person like Nanua who plays with his left mouse. 
<laughs> watching him in esports tournaments yeah. with that shit, I was like, "What's happening? <laughs> like, it's, what it's, is happening?" It breaks your brain a little bit for sure. <laughs> I just like keyboards are not set up that way. <laughs> like, ah, <laughs> uh, I just that is a <laughs> whatever. <laughs> that is insane. <laughs> Anyway, final thoughts on on the abs. I think we kind of already covered most of it, AJ. Um, suck less. Yeah. All right. That's how we're gonna finish the show. Thank you, everyone, for <laughs> watching. Huh? No, I'm good. Okay. I just won't say that out loud. I won't say that on we'll, on air. We'll talk in approximately one minute. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll say this when the show. Goes thank off you for air. watching, listening. However, you consume the pod, we appreciate all of you. Uh, hope we will see you tomorrow. Our normal, probably normal, one thirty show. I know our shows have been a little all over, all over the place uh, this week. I but will probably not be. Oh, right. there yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can't show you because I'd have to roll up my sleeve all the way. But AJ's a superhero at this point. Yep. He's somebody got a booster vaccine. He's triple vax. So, so I'll be tomorrow. There. I get to throw it all up, and then all of its effectiveness goes away. Yeah, great, great. <laughs> I think that's how it works for sure. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) That's definitely how vaccines work. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Either way, we'll have a show for you. We hope to see you there. We will be live post game Thursday, despite the Broncos cutting into our time a little bit. Yeah, we will be here on Thursday. Same stuff, same place. You know, you love us all. Check out uh, my prospect portfolio that just dropped earlier today. If you want to get hype on future abs. Some of them are looking good, man. I tell you what, we are going to have to do an entire Drew Hellison pod. I'm saying. Not long from now, because <laughs> he is going to be the savior. <laughs> we didn't even mention Curtis McDermott today. Good for us. Before we do. It's because he's terrible. We will talk to you later. <laughs>